All right, man. So uh, Charles Barkley was on Dan Patrick's uh, podcast, you know, and he was speaking um, speaking on him. He was going to give his daughter one of his uh, accomplishments, his trinkets that he's earned throughout the game, and the rest he was going to sell in his hometown of Alabama, in Alabama, you know. And this is the thing, man. Why? Uh, why don't you want to see the accomplishments that you've done in the game? You know, listen, we understand his notion that he when, when he said, uh, you know, uh, you know, if he had a, a room full of his own trinkets that he wanted to show people uh, uh, that he'd be lame for it and everything. And we understand what he means and everything, man. But nah, nah, you know, why don't you? even want to see your memorabilia what your accomplishments why don't you want to see your accomplishments in the game you know we over here with these mega effects believe that it's because it reminds him of what he did not do that being win a chip right and we understand that but man it's charles barkley you know one of is one of the main perpetuators of this ring culture you know, that it seems as though that, you know, he can't take anymore. You know what I'm saying? And look, man, it's a sad sight to see. Um, Listen, man, we over here with these mega effects, you know, we got smoke for Charles Barkley and, and his era based off of what they've said over so, so many years. You know what I'm saying about this era and, era, you know, you know uh, eras in the past. You know, as far as past the 2000s, man. And it's like, now we see, like, he's, like, we see insinuations of, like, regret or, or something. It's like, you you don't, you don't want to see what you've done for the game. You don't even want to see it. Just because you know that you've done it. I mean, it's an accomplishment. That's why you've got it, so you can keep it, look at it, and cherish it, man. You don't even want it in your possession, you know? And this ain't something that we want to see, man. Um, we don't like beating dead horses over here, man. And to see Charles Barkley come out and say things like this, it makes us, uh, makes us a little, you know, makes us a little sad. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, man, Charles Barkley, you are. Thought you were bigger than that. Thought you were, you know, tougher than that. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sad. You know, um, look, we uh, we wouldn't put so much. We wouldn't put. We see, we don't. We wouldn't cook you guys so hard. You know what I'm saying? If you wasn't cooking us so hard throughout all of this time, and and now that you guys are getting cooked, we see this uh, this defeatist attitude coming from you guys, man. It's it's. We don't like it, man. It's nasty. It's nasty, man. It's cringy. It's supposed to be tough, right? Come on, Charles, man. Why doesn't Charles... <sighs> man, this is crazy. This is heartbreaking, you know? It, it seems as though he's broken. Look, you're a weak-ass goat. We've seen uh, Dan Dan Patrick speak on your fake goat and M- him and MJ's relationship. And it's like... Charles Barkley's still stepping on eggshells. You know what I'm saying? Because your fake goat is so sad. He's such a pussy-ass dude. Like, dude, like, you thought this dude, Charles Barkley, thought them boys was brothers. No. No. Super. No, that boy used you. Because he's, he's in the media, man. Boy used you. And as soon as, soon as, soon as he found out you couldn't be used... Man, he kicked your ass to the curb. You thought that was your brother. Shoot, man. Come on, man. Man, come on, bro. Come on, man. You got to listen. Keep your stuff, man. Cherish what you've done for the game. In the game. Damn. What the fuck? What you doing? What? Come on, man. 